I was sent five chapters of a new biography of Rudolf Nureyev, in proof copy, in fact, about 20 years ago. There's a new biography called Nureyev, The Life, by Julie Kavanagh, who I know a bit. And she sent me these five chapters, which cover his childhood and Rudolf's student years in Leningrad and this defection in Paris. And it really struck me as a fantastically cinematic tale of artistic um, ambition within, within this greater Cold War context. But I, at that time, I had no conscious desire or intent to direct. Only now have I worked with the producer, Gabby Tanner, who actually is the produ produced this film. I'm a sort of secondary producer, maybe, but she's the principal producer. But she was the person who said to me, once we'd made two films, do you want to do the Nureyev thing? Because she knew I was interested in it. And, and I said, I, I realized I did, you know, that I thought if someone else is going to make this, I'll be bummed. <laughs> so I, I, uh, we started the look for a writer. We, I approached David Hare, uh, English uh, playwright, but, and also f known for his great screenwriting of the film The Hours and The Reader. Uh, but I felt David could write and understand this sort of high-definition ballet dancer in the particular political, so, sort of political time, the Cold War. And indeed, David responded to the idea, and we started to work together. And so I think the first draft of this was delivered in May. We commissioned David in 2014, the end of 2014. So by May, there was a first draft. And we built on that draft and worked on it. And then we initiated our search for our, our young Nureyev. Well, I decided quite early on that I wanted uh, a dancer to play Nureyev. And I felt strongly she should be someone unknown. So the audience brought no baggage at all. It was a, a, a sort of virgin face for the audience. But it, clearly it was a big ask, and uh, I didn't know the ballet world. I mean, I, you know, screen acting is one thing and ballet dancing is something else. But we initiated this big sweep of casting search through the Russian-speaking dance world, Russian ballet companies, Russian ballet schools, and Oleg was on the radar quite early on, but not until I had met a lot of people did he really... He stayed on a short list of four or five that we screen tested, at, I guess, in October 2016. And I immediately had a very, very strong feeling from the work that I saw and how he responded to my direction that he had a, an innate screen acting gift. Well, I like it when there are films with c c c tricky or confrontational protagonists. I like that. I think human beings were all full of, were not all nice guys. And I think that you know, some people have c had concerns that he, his, his attitude would be alienate audiences. I take the view that if someone is interesting, Audience want to be interested. They don't necessarily want to have to like somebody. Or it's interesting to have your sense of allegiance to a protagonist is challenged by the protagonist. Um, and I think that's interesting as, as a, uh, in a story. Um, and Uriah is fascinating. I mean, he is, he is this pure, big ego with this huge commitment to dance. And, I, and David and I felt we can't, we can't dilute that aspect of him. Well, I think he had a sort of on-stage charisma and, and energy and a sort of sexual charisma that was very potent to an audience. I think he was probably a fiery, uh, compelling dancer with a technique that some pe I would, I've learned was a, a little rough around the edges when he first came to the West. And indeed, he wanted to work with the Danish dancer, Eric Brun, to perfect who he regarded as the essence of perfect classical dance. Um, I think he thought that in the West he would find uh, further inspiration for, for dancing. Um.